Most of you will be familiar with these, the Baofeng, the, the humble Baofeng radio. This is the UV S9 Plus, UV 5R, 2 meters, 70 centimeters handheld. Well, there is a new player in town. This is the Quanchang UV K5, another Chinese handheld radio. Now, you're probably thinking, here we go, another handheld radio that is just the same old thing, cheap stuff, Chinese, whatever. Well, well, this is a radio that it is slightly different than a Baofeng. When I say slightly, it's actually got a few cool features that one of these does not have. So we're going to go over what those features are. Um, why this might be the right radio for you. We're also going to put this on the spectrum analyzer. We're going to do some power tests and some sensitivity tests just to see how it is because it is a new radio. And uh, we're going to go through it over on the workbench. So join me over there. Let's have a look. Now, for this radio, the first thing that I just wanted to show you was the manual. The manual is actually surprisingly well written. It is um, in very good, easy to understand English. There is a list of features here that you can see. Um, we're going to go through some of the main ones which I've come across that I think are um, relevant to how I think a lot of people might use and operate. Um, it gives you here a breakdown of what you actually get and uh, and just a diagram of the radio, the what everything means and how to do certain functions, what all the menus mean. I mean, it's a really well um, written manual. It's not very long, it's pretty small but I think a majority of people will be able to uh, work through it. So a couple of things that we'll um, start off here is, we'll start off with the specifications. You can actually uh, store 200 channels. It will also st uh, store FM radio because it will receive FM radio channels, 20 channels. Also has 10 NOAA channels as well. It says that it has a frequency stability there, um, all these other specifications. The weight is not too bad. It's probably a little bit heavier than a normal Baofeng um, because it's, it seems to be a little bit more rugged. Um, we'll go over some more features that it's got there shortly. It's got all of these specifications as far as the sensitivity is concerned. Now, as you can already probably notice there, it has a general coverage received from 50 megahertz right up to 600 megahertz, and it's got all the various sensitivities there. We're going to test those and see if they actually meet these sensitivities. So um, I'll pop the uh, pop that on the on the uh, generator later on, and we'll see how it goes. So there is some versions here. Now the version that I believe I've received here is the FCC version, FCC version, which is basically the American version. It will transmit on the 420 to 450 megahertz band and the 144 to 148 megahertz band. So I believe that they are frequency locked. On the other, um, as you can see here, there's also a European version, which is similar except for um, the smaller UHF and VHF band. And then also a, a normal version, which basically transmits across the whole UHF band and also VHF band. There is some other specs there, as you can see, I'm not gonna read them all out, but basically it says the output power is about five watts. So let's have a look at the radio. Um, it comes with a lithium ion battery. This is a 1600 milliamp hour battery, um, 7.2 volts. Um, I've put the belt clip on the back. It's you know quite a substantial, decent battery. Now, one of the things that I first noticed about this radio when I got it was, well, apart from the fact that I put the battery in the wrong way, uh, there we go, it clips in. It has USB, but it has USB-C. There we go. Um, so USB-C for charging, so that is really, really handy. There is also a speaker mic port, of course, um, and then you've got your PDT and a couple of function buttons here on the side. You've also got a light on the top and also a volume knob here as well, um, which turns the radio on and off. So the manual says type C charging port. So mm, probably not. It looks like the microphone jacks are used for the programming. So I reckon you can program this using Chirp or another piece of software. So um, turning it on, if you listen. Welcome, frequency mode. As you can see, it has a um, different English um, sound to what a Baofeng does. So um, it's got also a dual VFO. Um, there's a function button here so that I can change VFO. So I just press F and AB there to change. I can dial in my frequency. Four, six, five, two, zero. 
It also has program programmed into it um, NOAA frequencies for weather. So I can go here um, N1, oops, wrong way, N1, N2, N3. So it's got them all pre-programmed in here. This doesn't apply to me in Australia, but I know that my US viewers would be interested to know that that is um, automatically um, part of the, the radio and pre-programmed in. There's also FM radio, of course, so I can go function and FM. Which then switches to the FM VFO, and I can enter directly the FM frequency that I want. Going into the menus as well, um, it's all the standard menus here, which are a little bit uh, similar to a Baofeng. You've got your squelch, you've got your steps and, and transmits power, and, and all of the CTCSS tones and everything that you would normally expect of a radio such as this. Um, there were a couple of bits in here that I didn't quite understand what they meant um, but then when I consulted with the manual then I realized what they were. Um, one thing was that this radio does have is it actually has a frequency copy uh, mode in it so you can actually if I put that into that mode there is a frequency scanner here so I can actually transmit or be in close proximity of a transmitter turn this frequency scanner on and it should give me the frequency and the CTCSS. I tested this with another radio that I've got. Um, it seemed to pick up harmonics as well, so that was a little bit annoying. You can see there it's just said scan fail because it hasn't picked up anything um, nearby down here. I think it's kind of like, um, what do they call it? I think it's like close, close calling. I'm not sure exactly what they call it in here. There is also a memory channel frequency copying function in here. So if you've got another one of these radios, you can actually program it all up and then you can copy that over into another radio as well. I haven't done that yet, but uh, the manual says that it is quite an easy process to do. It also has a, a couple of different types of Roger beeps. They're always annoying for amateurs, of course. Interesting too here, I didn't notice this. This actually gives me the voltage of the battery, so that's rather cool. Um, it also has the ability to, as I mentioned before, receive airband. So a lot of the Baofeng radios are limited because they are only um, 136 megahertz to 174 megahertz and then about 400 to 470 megahertz. Whereas this radio, as I mentioned, has a general coverage received. So it'll receive all the way down to um, 50 megahertz. So there, there you go, 50 megahertz in FM. It will also receive all the way up to 600 megahertz. So there you go. Um, so wideband receive, which you don't get with a Baofeng. Now it also receives, as you saw before, airband as well. So if I just go to an airband frequency, it's automatically then switched and it's gone to AM. So I'm actually listening on 118. 100, which I think is my local aircraft um, control tower. So I can listen to AM radio as well, so uh, on, on the airband, which is pretty cool. So it does a lot more than what just a standard Baofeng does. Um, it also has obviously a light, which is important for a lot of people if you ever get stuck in the dark and you need to operate a light. It has a manual squelch override as well, so that's what those two function buttons. I'm pretty sure that these function buttons, you can program those for different uh, options as well. All right, I'm going to do two audio tests to see what the radio sounds like on both receive and transmit. So I'm just on a simplex frequency here. I'm using my Yaesu VX8. So basically, let's have a look and see what it sounds like. This is VK7HH testing Quanchen UV K5 receive audio testing 12345 VK7HH. And now I'm going to do the same test, except this time I'm going to leave my Yesu handheld on the frequency and you'll hear what the transmit audio sounds like. K7 Hotel Hotel testing the transmit audio of the Quanching UV K5. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, VK7 Hotel Hotel. Alright, so this is the setup. I've got it on 146 500 on 2 metres. I basically just connected the output of the radio via this short jumper here. This is RG223, pretty low loss. There's only about probably half a meter of coax there. And if we have a look here at the TX power, so just this, this number here, if we transmit, it's currently on high power, and it puts out about four and a half watts of power. So that's low, low power, 
1.26 watts. Let's go, I think medium. Medium is 2.8, 2.9 watts. For those of you who are interested in the Roger Beef and what it sounds like, I can turn that on. So you've got two options. You've got MDC. So if we turn that on and have a listen, you've got the little squawk that you would hear with public service. And then you've also got a Roger Beep, which is simply which is actually not the worst Roger Beep I've ever heard. Okay, we're on high power. Let's have a look on 440. Oh, turn down the volume. 4.6 watts, 4.5 watts, about the same as what the other was, or the other one was on VHF. Low power, 1.7, and medium. 3.8 watts, probably slightly more than the medium. So there we go. Okay, let's move on to some sensitivity tests and let's see how sensitive this receiver really is. I'm starting off on six meters, 52.525. So let's have a listen and see how sensitive the receiver is. So 52.525, I've got a one kilohertz tone deviated at three kilohertz, you can see there. So let's try it at that. This is what we would normally do if we were doing a cyanide test. Unfortunately, I don't have a two and a half millimeter plug which goes in the side here um, for the speaker. Otherwise, I could do a proper cyanide test. Let's just see how far down we can go before um, we drop or before the squelch closes basically on six meters, which is just a general coverage receiver. So that's minus 100. I hope you can see that there. It's a bit hard to see on this uh, with this old CRT monitor. And the squelch closes at about minus 111. So let's go back and just check because I think in the menus you can actually set the squelch level. So it's set on four at the moment. Let's go to zero, open it all the way up. Yep, it does. So let's go one, which is the minimum. And let's see what we can go down to now. So it's not that much better. It's about minus 100, 114 dBm, which is a little bit short of, I think, of what they specify in here. Let's have a look. So the specifications say 50 to 76 is minus 121 for 12 dB cyanide. Um, it's getting a little bit noisy. I can, as I said, I can't me measure 12 dB cyanide. I could, let's go down, let's go down to minus 121. And let's just open up the squelch. Okay, I can hear that now. So it is receiving, that's probably, I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell without telling on my meter, but it is receiving it. You just have to open up the squelch. Um, it seems like the squelch is set relatively hard on this radio, which is, you know, I guess neither here nor there. So, okay, so that's at 52.525. Uh, that's the six meter amateur band. Let's go up to 146.500 and see what we receive at. The specification says between 136 and 173 minus 123. So the squelch is still on level one, but it closes, it opens, and it is opening at currently minus 121. Let's go down minus 123, still receiving. Okay, that's good. 125, 127, wow. 129, it still hasn't closed. 130, still hasn't closed. Closes at 131, so minus 131. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty decent. That's a pretty decent receiver. Um, so, okay, so that's better than what they're specifying here. Um, and the squelch is still closed. And in actual fact, if I turn it back on, I reckon I can still hear it if I open up the squelch. So that's, that's working actually very well. It's a pretty hot receiver on two meters. So let's now go 440. 
Okay, 440 and we're transmitting. Let's go back up to, well, let's find out what they specify first. At 440, it's going to be minus 123. Okay, so if we go already, I can see minus 123, no problems at all. Opening up the squelch, it's actually pretty solid. I would say that that is about 12 dB cyanide just by my ear without measuring it. Minus 126. Closes at about minus 127, so not quite as sensitive as uh, two meters, but that is pretty good. One thing I did do is I did bring this radio up to a broadcast site on the weekend when I was doing some work on a repeater just to see how it would handle all of the RF. There's multiple transmitters on this site. And I could not hear another signal on this radio. I had my Yesu, which was being interfered with. It was chopping in and out and I could hear um, there was a local station that was chopping in and out, but I could still hear them on the Yesu. I couldn't hear them on the Quanchang. So it, like most handheld radios, does not like front end overload. That's just a direct comparison to the Yesu. Um, a Baofeng would be exactly the same, I would imagine, because of the wide front end of these things. I was interested to see because this does have a wider front end to cover all of these extra frequencies from 500 uh, sorry, from 50 all the way up to 600 megahertz. But uh, yeah, it doesn't handle RF and uh, its selectivity is uh, not the best. So, um, but that's that's kind of to be expected. But if you don't have those issues um, and if you're not living near like large broadcast transmitters or in uh, cities where there's a lot of RF interference, I reckon this radio will do quite well. If you'd like to pick up one of these, then I'll put a link in the description below. If you'd like to check out some of my other radio reviews, then there will be a link on the left for you to check out.